Greetings, students of the Word of God. Will you bow with me? Bow your hearts, even to bow ourselves, our lives before the awesome King. Jesus, thank you that you reach out to us and you want to make yourself known to everyone hearing today. In Jesus' name, we trust and celebrate and listen. Amen. We are looking at uh, Melchizedek, uh, and we're, we're getting our information from Hebrews, and then we'll uh, slip to Genesis, just as Hebrews directs us to. Now, this book of Hebrews begins with an encouragement for us all to seek after knowing Christ, for God has appointed him heir of all things. So he has everything we need. Everything we need he has. He's the heir of all things. So, so the word of God urges us to seek him, to go after him. Everything in Christ is for everyone who believes him. Although the book is widely read and preached, it is strange that we do not have certainty about the author. Most Bibles of our time do not list anyone as the writer. However, many of the older books listed Paul, while some others, Timothy, and there were even others. We should note that just because we find that Paul or Timothy or one of the others at the, at listed in our Bibles at the end, that does not mean those words were in the original. They were all likely added later. As mentioned, various names have been given over the years, and some preachers do teach the book with certainty of the author's name. Well, regardless of the author's identity, the Holy Spirit led him to bring up the importance of Christ as a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek, adding, concerning him we have much to say. He follows this with a word concerning the hearers. He says, it is hard to explain about him, it is hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. These readers needed more teaching because they had not pursued beyond the milk of God's word to take up solid food, as mentioned in chapter 5, verses 11 through 14. These words, that they have become dull, are in quite a contrast to chapter 2, the earlier reminders that uh, we're told we must pay close attention and not neglect the Word of God or we may drift away from it. So it's not, God does, did not intend to give us some and then let's let us stay there. Jesus has everything and he wants to give it all to us. But we need to want more. Now he's calling us. So, apparently, trusting his listeners were beginning to thirst for more, the writer proceeded. But let me pause and ask you, are you searching, yearning for more? The Holy Spirit in us certainly is. And are you certain the Lord is reaching out to you with more? I am. Now he said he had much to say. When he said uh, he has much to say concerning him, typically uh, we're taught that him means Jesus, but no, it means he's talking about him, this him, Melchizedek, king of righteousness. He's also king of Salem. Salem means peace. He's king of righteousness and king of peace. We're also told that this Melchizedek is without father, mother, genealogy, beginning of days or end of life, for, quote, 
like the Son of God, he is a priest perpetually. Note, Jesus' perpetual priesthood is according to, we're told, his perpetual priesthood is according to the order of Melchizedek. Well, many contend that Melchizedek is a man who abides, for, uh, abides forever. Well, he abides forever, but is he a man? It is strange to understand our Lord as following a man's order, where he says that his priesthood is according to the order of Melchizedek. Some understanding of Melchizedek's description makes this clear. For example, Melchizedek's made like the Son of God. He was made like the Son of God, Scripture says. May and, and this scripture says that. However, it may re be rendered from the root word that he is he is made the same as the Son of God. So instead of made like the Son of God, it just says he's the same as the Son of God in, in the literal. And he certainly appears to be the same as the Son of God. Well, just how great then was Melchizedek. The author urges us to observe how great he is from uh, 7.4 to observe how great he is to whom Abraham the patriarch gave a tenth of the choicest spoils. He gave a tenth of the best. Well, the full account is in Genesis 14, 17 through 20. Way back at the beginning of the Word of God. There we read, Then after his return from the defeat of Kedileomer and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him, that went out to meet Abraham, at the valley of Shiva. That is the king's valley. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine to Abraham. Now he was a priest of God most high. He blessed him. He, Melchizedek, blessed Abraham, saying, Blessed be Abram of God most high possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. He gave him a tenth of all. Well, we have heard that, perhaps you have, that concealed in the Old Testament, what is concealed in the Old Testament is revealed in the New Testament. And it applies here. For Abraham's encounter with Melchizedek, which we just read about, is revealed in the New Testament that his, that his, account, his encounter was with Jesus because Jesus himself said in the New Testament in John 8, 5, 6, John 8, 56, Your father, Abraham, rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. Abraham saw Jesus. Melchizedek is the name of Jesus. A name of Jesus. We have other names of Jesus. Uh, Jesus has appeared uh, at various times through the scriptures. Concealed in the Old Testament, revealed in the New Testament. Well, returning from the miraculous defeat of a larger army, much, much larger, and the release of his nephew Lot, whom they had taken captive, Melchizedek, described as king of Salem, or king of peace, and priest of God Most High, came to Abraham with bread and wine. Now, I know that's familiar to all of us in the New Testament. With these, the bread and the wine, 
Melchizedek was serving what Jesus later served his, his disciples, much later, about 2,000 years. Although before he went to the cross, Jesus said, the blood and the bread were his blood and body. Remember that? He gave them to his disciples and he said, this is my body. This is that blood shed for you. That was before he went to the cross, before it was actually shed. But it was what Jesus said it was because he surpasses our limitations and spoke into it the truth that certainly was going to happen. If Melchizedek was Christ, as I believe the account reveals, then the king of righteousness and peace Melchizedek, served to Abraham what he later served his disciples. Jesus served Abraham what he later served his disciples. Now that, that then reminds us that there are a number of scriptures that talk about uh, things that are for us that we seem to think must always be ahead of us However, when they are spoken to us, they're for us, and God wants us to partake. He wants us to partake now of his grace and his powers to come. He wants us to partake now of the rivers of life flowing from the throne of God. Just as he wanted Abraham to partake there 2,000 years ago of the blood shed for him and the body broken for him. Whew. Melchizedek, after bringing the bread and wine, blessed Abraham and remember, Abraham was blessed by Jesus or Melchizedek and so, because he is the father of believers, Abraham is the father of believers. Therefore, when Abraham was blessed, all believers were blessed. The blessings then, blessings flow from Abraham to all his family, which God promised to him. Hear the Lord. Trust Him for blessings in your life. Well, following the bread and the wine and the blessing and the praising of God, he paused and praised God as well, giving God glory and said that uh, God had, it was God who took care of Abraham's enemies and brought that great victory. So, it's God, that's what God wants to do in our lives. He wants us to rely on His power. Well, following that, Abraham gave. In, in gratitude, Abraham gave. Recognizing God had done this work for him. So, so following the bread, wine, and the blessing, and the praise to God, Abraham gave a tenth of everything taken from those kings to Melchizedek. They were given with a grateful heart. He's leading us how to give with a grateful heart. Do you know the tithe is in everything we get? One way to, that's the way God wants us to look at it. The tithe, God wants us to tithe to him, but it's in everything we get. We take a tithe out of it. And God gives more. God will replace it, and he will give more than we have given out. The well, Hebrews, back to Hebrews, points out that the priest of Levi, the first uh, priest of the Aaronic faith, the priest Levi was in the loins of his great father Abraham. So he and gave tithes to Melchizedek, indicating his was a greater priesthood than Levi's. So. You got that? He, the, the book of Hebrews is saying that um, 
Levi came out of a line of a family from Abraham. And Levi, being the, the, the priest, then in Abraham gave tithes to this Melchizedek, which is saying that was a greater priesthood. Melchizedek was the greater priest. He was Jesus, our great high priest. Well, the author noted in this case, watch this, I'll try to make it clear. He says there in Hebrews 7, 8, in this case, that is Levi's priesthood. Mortal men, mortal men receive tithes. But in that case, that is Melchizedek's case, one receives present tense, not past tense. One receives them of whom it is witness that he lives on. He lives on. He's Jesus. The verse is telling us that someone is receiving our tithes now. And he is Melchizedek, another name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ himself, can you see this? Receives our tithes from our hands. Surely this helps us to see past the offering trays, etc., or the envelopes that are mailed, mailed out to see that the hand of the Lord Jesus is receiving our tithes. And he who has everything, who has everything, has it for us, and he will return to us. Now, Abraham's trust in God was so great that he refused to take any of the spoils from the grand victory. He explained, quote, I have sworn to the Lord God, most high possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take a thread or a sandal that is yours, lest you should say, I have made Abraham rich. That's in Genesis 14, 22, and 23. Shall we follow Abraham, whose spiritual children we are? Follow him in grateful tithing while trusting in God to provide for us? Jesus said in the New Testament, If you are the children of Abraham, do the deeds of Abraham. John 8, 39. And I asked, but how? When God gave the victory, he supplied the tithe. God, who gives us victory, supplies the tithe. May you see that hand of God reaching out to bless you and to share with you of his everything. God really does love you. 